Coming up today on Locked On Texas Tech Emergency Bonus Episode. Big Maple back in the building. Was he ever out of it? We investigate. Joined by Kirk Lee Knowles of Level 13 Agency. Coming up on Locked On Texas Tech. You are Locked On Texas Tech. Your daily podcast on the Texas Tech Red Raiders. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. We're going to start this thing off right. Everything runs through Lubbock. Thanks for joining us again on Locked On Texas Tech on the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. I'm Casey Cowan coming back at you west of the 100th Meridian, where it's really going down for this emergency episode this is why you got to be subscribed on youtube or anywhere you get podcasts so you never miss anything like this you thought we were done for the week ha it's not like we did as well no we expected to be back with sizable news on friday you may notice if you're watching on youtube that's not chris level in the pantera shirt that is my man kirk lee knowles level 13 agency everyman media works black label radio Texas Tech fan, we can include that. Maybe that should have been yeah. first. I don't know. But yeah. uh, busy guy. And uh, Kirk, man, thanks for joining us for this conversation uh, that we'll have about the news today. Chris in the air, literally with the basketball team headed to Houston. And you were the perfect guy to visit with uh, about this if you were willing to spend any time. Because obviously with Level 13 Agency, for those who are not familiar outside of Lubbock, uh, name, image, and likeness is the business and uh you've been as involved i know over what 24 48 72 hours or longer and yeah. what now has amounted to fardaz amac tweeting out an indication that he's remaining a red raider this following yeah. reports that he was headed for the transfer portal man where do we begin where did this kind of begin for you as this cycle got started it, it man casey it has been a whirlwind over the last I mean, it really, it seems like a week and a half, but it's really been what, 50, like 42 hours, if that. <laughs> um, but yeah, so, you know, to us, it's crazy when we start hearing things online before we hear them personally. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, because, you know, normally we have a pretty good indication of what's going on just based off of the work that we do, the communication we have with our guys, with the players, with, you know, the people we're working with. So when uh, Jeff Goodman starts getting on his uh, his you know thumbs getting a little happy and starts tweeting out, just you know the transfer portal stuff is one thing, but then you start saying stuff about rushing back to play. I mean, literally that was in no way, shape, or form has anything to do with what happened in the last couple of days. So you know it, it's been chaotic for sure. Uh, and let me remind people, if you don't mind, for those yeah. who are not living on Twitter, Jeff Goodman, college basketball reporter, was the one that reported out based on sources that AMAC was headed to the transfer portal. wasn't like there was ever any big announcement from AMAC himself. And then followed that up with a tweet that we discussed on Locked On Texas Tech a few days ago regarding part of the reason being a rush back uh, from his head coach. And again, this based on source reporting. So that, that's what Kirk is alluding to right. there. And yeah, that's what really, I think, kind of got the beehive buzzing. Which is kind of crazy too, because like literally that all happened you know, uh, I think two days after Dawes got his cast off. So, you know, he really was in the process of getting back, um, starting rehab, had a great doctor's appointment, um, and everything was really moving in the right direction. And, you know, let me also, like, emphatically um, tell everybody, like, Dawes was never in the portal. Like, he was literally never in the transfer portal. That can be looked up. You can find who's in the portal, and Far Dawes was never there. Um, was there some discussions? Was there some stuff going on? Yeah, for sure. It's just not nearly as serious or crazy as the Twitter sphere kind of made it all out to be. So we had some discussions with Dawes, you know, and you got to remember when a player's hurt and he's having to sit on the bench, he can't participate in practice. Um, everything kind of seems magnified because you're not focusing on what you're here to do. You know, you're here to play yeah. basketball. And when you can't do that, all the other noise gets a lot bigger. Um, so, uh, you know, that was kind of the situation there. There's all kinds of rumors about level 13 and NIL and all this different stuff. And, you know, we'll have some stuff come out later. And I was talking to you a little earlier, Casey, we'll probably have Dawes on the show next week. Uh, Black label radio. 
Black Label Radio. Radio podcast, baby. Let's go. Yes, sir. To, to kind of go over his side of the story, but it wasn't nearly as dire as, you know, I would go on to, and I rarely do, but message boards and, you know, obviously online and see stuff. I mean, just the most outlandish things being said. And it really, <laughs> I mean, it kind of magnified into this whole, you know, the programs burning down and just stuff about Adams and, you know, all based off of kind of hearsay. Um, so we met with Dawes, we met with his agent, you know, we, and we just, it's a business, you know, people don't realize that yes, it's college basketball, but from our end, it's a, it's a very high level business and you got to make sure that all parties are happy, that everything's moving in the right direction. Um, and when you have injuries, that kind of changes things from, from everyone's perspective, you know? So Sure. We want to make sure he's happy. He wants to make sure that we're happy and that the team, you know, there's so many different moving parts, but yeah. I can tell you the last conversation I had with Fardaz as he was walking on the plane that, that uh, you were alluding to that, that the guy that should be sitting in my seats on right now, big, handsome, uh, yeah, big, handsome, you know, <laughs> Dawes is happy, man. And he's excited to get back to, to playing and he's doing everything he can to rehab. He told me today he's walking on that foot. Um, you know, so things are going well there, but, um, yeah, man, it's just, it, it was absolute chaos. And I kind of stayed off of everything until today when, you know, I knew that, you know, the news is going to come out that everything's fine. So, um, it's been, it's been crazy, man. One thing I really regret is that, um, it seems like the reporting from Goodman, um, spun tech fans into, and I don't blame them for it. Um, the possible belief that, these are things from like the AMAC camp that there's some agenda or interest being driven uh, because of the reporting. And I mean, I don't know, you tell me, it sounds like that was miles away from the reality. And, and that's one thing I hate for uh, someone to, to have to go through if that was the case. Yeah. You know, as of last night, when all of this was and again, Dawes was never in the portal. Um, <laughs> I was talking to talking to him last night and he was just like, kind of dumbfounded at how out of control all this got um where there's some conversations about i mean you got to remember too when he's coming back there's all kinds of stuff that he needs as far as treatments and all these different things going on that he's working on and so there's always conversations about what's best for him moving forward in which if you know any of our staff if you know any of the training the you know strength and conditioning every we've got the best in the country and they're going to do what's best and there's never going to be a time I would say for almost any high level program that a coach is going to jeopardize, especially a kid like Fardoz is future. <laughs> right. You know yeah. what I'm saying? For, for a short amount of time. So um, all this is going on. Dawes obviously has questions and concerns and he's trying to move forward in, in the best way for him um, to heal and to get everything going. So what there's always conversations out there, but it was never something of, okay, you know, I, I'm upset about my NIL. I'm upset about, you know, the coaching staff. They're trying to get me back. Nobody wants to get back quicker than Fart Oz does. I can assure you that. So last night he was just kind of at a loss. Like, man, what, you know, this is, this is kind of crazy how out of control all this has got. Um, so, you know, everybody got together and made sure everybody's on the same page and, and the staff is great and Dawes is great. And, you know, he got a picture getting on a plane today and he's going to be on the bench tomorrow. So <laughs> just, yeah, it's just, just chaos, man. Just a wild ride for a, a Texas tech fan uh, yeah. this week for that reason and beyond. Um, I, I mean, I've got to ask because I'm curious, I'm curious about a lot of things like how this contributed, I guess, on a ranking scale when it comes to reasons that there was even some consideration or that conversations even needed to happen um, with name, image, and likeness being as big of a part of the conversation uh, as it is now uh, within college sports in, in so many different ways. W where does that rank on the uh, reasoning chart for why conversations even happen about other options? Or is it totally out of the blue to even toss that uh, on the list? And let's look each other in the virtual eyes here so we can be honest. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Casey, you're the last person I'd ever lie to. Yeah. <laughs> Now, all the listeners, I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't even know who it is. No, so, <laughs> of course, okay, with the transfer portal, and you and I have said this a thousand times on, on Black Label Radio, but with the transfer portal the way it is, with NIL now, I mean, basically you're at free agency every, and now even midway through a season, you know, a December transfer, just like JT was for us last year. Mm -hmm. um, that's yeah. always a conversation. So, 
I'm not going to say that that is not something we always kind of keep top of mind with, with the level 13 guys, but the way we operate and the way we work is, and you can ask Fardaz, you can ask any player on our roster. There's not another agency in the country that is as upfront or as, you know, honest about what we're trying to do and, and how we're helping these guys, um, get the most out of their name, image, and likeness. Now, with Fardaw's case, obviously it's a little different because he's Canadian. So there's stuff that we have to do with him that's different than we do with anybody else. Like, you know, next week he'll be in Canada doing a lot of promotional stuff for us while he's on his home, you know, home turf. So yeah. there are differences there, um, and that makes things a little more complicated. But, you know, it, it, it's not a situation where we don't have anybody on this team that's like, okay, um let's start ponying up see how much money we can get out of these guys before this you know the december portal it just it, it doesn't work like that and and honestly if it did that would create so much turmoil within the team that it wouldn't even be a fan or a, a agency like it wouldn't be it'd be a much bigger problem than that yeah that, that that's a good point i'm glad you bring up the international aspect because i wanted to ask you about this because i know you and i had spoke about it on Black Label Radio prior, as a fan, honestly, had no concept before that conversation that an international player would be so inhibited uh, compared to a domestic counterpart, so to speak, right. yeah. uh, when it comes to name, image, and likeness monetization. So um, I know there are paths, but it sounds like you guys have really had to to work to find them uh, to make it yeah. possible for those guys. Yeah, it's uh, it's different, man. We have to get immigration law in on it, you know, because it's not an NCAA violation. It's an actual visa and a and a, you know, an immigration uh, situation. Yeah. So, um, you know, the last thing we want is anybody in college basketball to be in the, you know, the first half and have, uh, you know, somebody roll up in a paddy wagon and start La off the court. Yeah, you know, yeah, so we have to watch that. But you know, you saw <laughs> and, and we've talked about it before. Um, Oscar Shibwe from uh, Kentucky. Yeah. You know, so he's a an international player and he spent a week in his home country doing promotion and that's how his NIL, you know, was able to be facilitated. And we've done the same stuff and Dawes has done stuff in Canada. So as Elijah, you know, they've done some promotional stuff in their home country, held camps and stuff like that. So um, you know, there's a way to do it and and we're doing it the right way. Dawes is doing it the right way. He's headed back next week to to get some of that done. And now some of the discussions is hey, we've got to get some stuff lined up while you're at home. So there's all kinds of business things that go on, but you know, I, I don't know one, like, yeah, rumors can get started, but how, and I, I know I'm focusing on one tweet, but how you get from, okay, there's a guy thinking about being in the portal to a coach is going to abuse a player's, you know, future by right. playing too early. You know, I just don't see how that stretch was even made. I don't either, and I'm just wondering who from uh, Travis County is making a phone call there. Maybe one free one, if I had yeah, to I guess. Say, I mean, it was one phone call. It probably to Jeff. <laughs> uh, and he just stirs something up pretty quick. Kirk, I just, I mean, the soap opera is what the soap opera is on the internet, and thank God there's yeah. so many people out there that are tech fans, and they don't even spend any time wasting brain power on that kind of soap opera. But uh, yep. over the last couple of games, it seems like there's a feel of a little bit of a funk, but – with this kind of news being reported, even though it's now turned out to be what it is, there are all kinds of questions about, well, is this a disgruntled locker room? Is, is chemistry an issue? I mean, can you speak to any of that at all, given the time I know you get to spend uh, yeah. around those guys? But first, today's episode brought to you by our friends at Bet Online, your headquarters for live stats, live betting, scores, odds, lines, props, more than ever before as we're getting into that home stretch of football season nfl playoffs going to be just around the corner bowl season almost on deck you want to get the bet online to check out all the angles all the action all the angles on the action the easiest place to keep up with your team on game day and the events that matter to you so head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about what the trends are looking like this week with bet online where the game starts. I mean, can you speak to any of that at all, given the time I know you get to spend uh, yeah. around those guys? And, you see, and that's another thing that, that we were talking about last night is just like, man, how how has something so small and, and honestly what everybody on the inside is kind of like insignificant. I mean, it wasn't a huge deal. You know, it was just working some kinks out, turned into the programs on fire, fire the head coach. You know, I mean, we're still, what, 20 
seven and zero at home or something like that. I can't even remember what the streak is now, but you've got a ton of freshmen. The rest are transfers, and a couple of guys that have remained from last year. Really, Ko being the lone starter that's stuck around from last year. So that being with you got a new offensive coordinator, you know, new coaching staff in different areas, and a ton of. 18 and 19 year old kids that have never played college basketball. It's a, I mean, we're literally in the middle of some growing pains and, you know, just a learning of what I'll say is last year, everybody was so spoiled with fifth year seniors and old guys being on the court. That makes things so much easier when you have 23 year old players across the, you know, the lineup, there's just a lot easier, you know, th those are mature young men as opposed to a bunch of guys getting used to playing at yeah. this level. So it doesn't even if they are newcomers. Exactly. Yeah. Even if they're newcomers, they're still old. You know, when we would go on the court last year, you'd have five of the oldest guys against everybody else in the country. And that was a lot of our success. We were old, we were tall, you know, and I mean, it just, it helped. So is there a different vibe this year? Absolutely, man. There's people learning. There's a lot of growth going on, but, you know, I really do think that once they – and you've, you've seen flashes of it, but once these guys hit their stride, a lot of this stuff is going to go away. Because once you start winning, once you start, you know, obviously the the Maui Invitational didn't go the way we wanted it to um, as, a, as fans, you know. So um, once you kind of get over that hump, people forget too the national championship year, they wanted to kick out Tariq and Matt Mooney, and they said that it was the biggest <laughs> – you know what I'm saying? Like, so before things mesh – then, yeah, it's uncomfortable. And is there growing pains from coaching side, from player side, and even us as fans? Absolutely. And I think that's what we're going through right now. What a week, man. Thank you uh, so much for, for hey, sparing some time here on Locked on Texas Tech. We need to talk about something really important before I get out of here. Lay it on me. Bacho is missing a cat. <laughs> I've seen the posters. Bacho has lost his cat, and it's over in the uh, – hold on. Let me see where he – First I, I, off, does he not know that this is just a great Christmas blessing from heaven to get a cat out of your life? Well, he actually he, wants to he, find this thing? He does. He's he's very adamant on it. So, I got to find that. Okay, Wildwood Lubbock. Um, let me see here. <laughs> it's APB Wild for Bacho's cat. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, I'm trying to get it. You know, it's like a black and white – Kind of go to my Twitter, you'll see a picture. Okay. But yeah, we got to get Red Raider Nation to rally here and find Bacho's cat before before Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I think we're up to the challenge, but I would just like to tell the guy again, it's one of the greatest blessings in a man's life if he ever gets rid of a cat. So hey, unless you what? got a barn somewhere oh. you need to keep mice out of, I, I don't know, Bacho, but I'm just throwing that out there. Otherwise, dogs let's help back. Bacho find his cat. Dogs come back, right? You don't have to find dogs. They come back. <laughs> I've been I mean, looking a little harder for a dog, I guarantee you that. See, yeah, you know, out here in West Texas, Casey, my granddad always told you, you can watch your dog run away for a week. That's exactly right. That's no. exactly right. And I would tell uh, Mr. Bacho, maybe check uh, if you got a vehicle under the vehicle, because once upon a time, cat we thought we lost uh, out at the ranch, yep. rode all the way from roughly Petersburg, Texas, America, to Meadowbrook Golf Course under that pickup <laughs> truck. Hey, when and, it gets cold, uh, man, that's where, yeah, I've heard. I've heard those stories. All, all the way back. Uh, shout out to Frank the Cat, best cat I've ever known, the only cat I've ever had any complimentary thing to say. Well, I bet you uh, can also say that life. that cat probably acted like a dog is why you liked him so much. It was a female named Frank, so you can kind of <laughs> get an idea as to its uh, hardened character. All right, I'm glad that yeah. I didn't get out of here before we mentioned the APB for Bacho's cat. So be on the lookout, black and white, and really for such a good player, man, he's had such a great start to the year. Any black and white cat you see out that you can grab, nab it. Nab it. Yeah. Let's just start bringing them to his get, door you know, and seeing if we get the right one. You have to go with the meet the parents, spray paint the tail of yeah. another, you know, whatever. Yeah, whatever we, whatever we can what do we to do. get him in the right frame of mind. <laughs> Kirk, I, really, man, I appreciate the insight uh, yeah, and man. appreciate the time, man. Uh, Merry Christmas. You too, brother. We'll see you next week. That's right. And join Kirk and I weekly-ish. Ish. You know, we got you got some other stuff going on. This week's been a little uh, on chaotic for me. You missed. That's right. Uh, anywhere you get podcasts, and sounds like we might have a chance to uh, visit with Big Maple himself uh, coming up on the other side of the weekend. So, yeah, check it out, Black Label Radio, anywhere you get podcasts. And after Locked On Texas Tech, make Locked On Sports Today your second listen. Available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, or anywhere 
you get podcasts. Appreciate again, Kirk Lee Knowles of Level 13 Agency for joining us. I'm Casey Cowan. We'll see you next time. Stand by and subscribe so you don't miss the next emergency episode on Locked On Texas Tech.